Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one in a best of three between Eugen and Gal O'Neill. And this is the semi-final of the Great Paradox Tourney. So both of these players we've seen throughout the tournament do very well indeed. They've shown their prowess at Steel Division and I'm really looking forward to seeing how these guys get on against each other. Eugen definitely tried and tested, same with Gal O'Neill. Both of them coming all the way through without any buys in the tournament. So very, very well played to both players. But let's have a look at today's game. This is St. Mary Glees, and we have Eugen with the first Panzerna and Gal O'Neill with the 12th SS Panzer. So this is a matchup that I would say falls in favour of the 12th SS Panzer in that uh, the Boiter Firefly can definitely do a lot of work against the first Panzerna's Cromwell 6s, whilst also having a Boiter Cromwell of its own to sort of accompany it. So the Boiter Firefly can be pretty unstoppable against the first Panzerna if they rely too much on these Cromwell 6s. And we already see one coming down here from Eugen on this top side. So Cromwell 6, we have the rifles in there. There is a recon squad and a command on the top side. For the mid, we have three units of rifles and a command carrier. And on the bottom side, it's going to be the same with a staghound as well. Now, those staghounds can definitely do a lot of work against the 12th SS Panzer if the 12th SS relies on the autocannon vehicles, like we can see coming out of Gal O'Neill. So on this top side, for example, we have the SBW222 120mm auto cannon there. And that's going to be accompanied by an AT gun, command infantry, and the Panzer Grenadiers. In the middle of the map, we have two more Panzer Grenadiers with the infantry, 258, 259, and on the bottom side, a 222 with a command, uh, with a, an AT gun, sorry, and a Panzer Gren in the half track. So, three 20 mil auto cannon units at the start of the game. Whereas we have one, two stag hounds coming out of Eugen. They could be honestly the perfect counter to these auto cannon units if they are used correctly. So I'm really looking forward to this game. Um, I think both players are or have been exceptional through both this tournament and the uh, second Asia Pacific tournament. So yeah, just really excited to get into this and um, we'll just speed it up to get the deployment uh, finished and get the game underway. So, yeah, the matchup that you've got to look at really is how these 222s and 259s react to the Staghounds and vice versa. And we've also got to keep an eye on how well this Cromwell 6 does on this top side as it will not be contested by a Firefly in the early game. Now, it makes sense that Gal O'Neill is not going to be bringing in the Firefly at the start of this one because the map doesn't really suit the Firefly in that there's not a super open ground that it can take advantage of. You could use it maybe defensively on the top side, but it's not worth 200 points in order to do so. The other interesting thing will be the engagement in this town. Looks like uh, Eugen's going to be unloading relatively early. Staghound might find a cheeky kill down the road. We see it opening up onto the 259 here. Does have the veterancy thanks to the command infantry. But with the 258 also firing at the Staghound, it looks like that Staghound has the potential of being forced to fall back. And Eugen knows it. Going to be microing it out of the way. On the top side, the Pack 38 has got into range of the Cromwell, 7, or Cromwell 6. And that's going to be an internal fragment. That is no more ammo for that Cromwell 6. And one unit of rifles also goes down to the 222 of Gal O'Neill. So on that top side, things really not going in Eugen's favour. If Gal O'Neill saw the internal fragments onto the Cromwell uh, 6, then it's going to be very easy for him to push up with this 222, as long as it doesn't get killed by the Piat of the Command Infantry. On the bottom side, looks like we're faced up to have a little fight down here. The half-track most likely going to scout out first and see what it can find. In the centre, Staghound has recovered, will be Firing at the 258, going to force that to fall back with a bounce off the front armor. Ooh, sh shooter wounded there. 222 forced to fall back as the command infantry do engage with the Piet. 
Come on, um, recon infantry on that top side. It looks like they did open up onto the Panzergrams with their rifles, got themselves spotted because of it, and took quite a lot of damage. So those recon need to be put on to return fire, and Eugen does just, just that. On the bottom side, Gal O'Neill loses his recon. Bailout just below the town, but with this Pack 38 taking out that uh, carrier there. So Staghound going to be rolling up into the face of this 222. We see the carrier trying to run that down as well. The carrier does have a chance of doing some morale damage there, so that's a good shout. But uh, what Eugen needs to do is uh, pin down these Panzergrens to stop them from getting the Faust onto the command carrier. Oh, that's a shame. Panzergrenadiers there are going to be picking up the kill. Now it's time for Galanil to get out of there with the Panzergrenadiers. And Eugen's going to be looking for the kill onto the 222. It does have tracks wheel damage, so it's not going to be getting very far. Eugen also wants to keep these command infantry alive so that he can keep the veterans here on his unit. Staghound has arrived on this top side. That's going to be engaging the Alfgladder. We've also got the Cromwell 6 firing away at that Alfgladder. Eugen has to be careful that he doesn't get this one internal fragment as well, because it's getting into range of this Pack 38 very soon. In the mid, we have the infantry engaging the Panzergrenz in the town. Panzergrenz do have an inherent advantage against rifles at range, so this isn't really working out for, for Eugen right now. And the 20 more auto cannons can do a lot of damage, especially with the Staghound being forced to fall back there. Command infantry on the top side have been spotted by the 222. Could be chewed up very easily if he's not too careful. On the bottom side, we have an engine stall for the Staghound. But that has found the kill onto the 222 which is very, very important. Once that engine stall is cleaned up, uh, the Staghound will be able to move uh, round through the open and take out these half tracks and help, hopefully help pin down these Panzergrenadiers. Does have to be careful this Pack 38 though. Gal O'Neill has got that into a very nice position right there. But the Staghound could be too fast and get out of line of sight quickly enough, which it does. So the Staghound's gonna be out of line of sight of the Pack 38. Pack 38's gonna have to roll through the tree line to try and get line of sight. Um, that Staghound is now trying to find the kills onto these half tracks though. Can the Pack 38 find the kill? This is going to be very, very important indeed. Transmission damage. Reveals itself to the Staghound. Eugen might just be able to get that out of the way in time if he notices. But currently, it's not going anywhere. Staghound is down. Very nice uh, placement of this AT gun by Gal O'Neill. Took out the command carrier just below the town here and also taken out that Staghound now, which has sort of taken away the control that Eugen had on the bottom side. Hurricane Mark IV, a little bit late to the party there. Not going to be able to pin down the Pack 38 in time. Also going to be able to open up onto the Stuart 5 though. That is very scary for the Stuart 5 there. 10 AP versus 5 armor. Eugen could lose this Stuart 5 very easily. On this top side, Cromwell 7 getting into position to take on the Pack 38. Almost kills it off. It is still firing at the Pack 38. But the Stuart did go down. Stuart goes down to the pack 38. That is massive. Hurricane going to be coming in with the strafing run onto the pack 38 again. Just a little bit too late there to make a difference. But on the top side, Staghound accompanying the Cromwell 6 are making a lot of ground now. So we might see a breakthrough on the top side from Eugen. Going to be getting the Staghound machine guns on target there with the Cromwell 6. And with the rifles and command infantry, should be able to make those Panzergrenadiers either surrender or kill them off, and then hopefully hit the uh, Panzergrenadiers as well, or Panzergrenfjeller, sorry. But on the bottom side, things are actually very close to going in favour of Gallo Neil. So we might see a swing in that Eugen wins the top side and Gallo Neil wins the bottom side. Currently 50 50 though, Eugen with a lead of 87 points. Panzergrenfjeller do get spotted when they engage the command infantry of Eugen. And they're going to be taken out shortly after, I'm sure. Panzergrenz go down. Panzergrenfjeller did manage to hide themselves, but the rifles are going to run into them very shortly. And honestly, that's just going to end up in a surrender. Yep. So Eugen's taking control of this top side. In the town, rifles are taking a beating. Staghound is still alive with a transmission damage though. It's going to be up to this Cromwell 5 to really help secure this centre town push that's coming out of Gallo Neal. 
He's made a lot of ground with his Panzergrand so far, beating back the rifle slowly but surely. 257 is trying to provide smoke on this top side, allow the Pack 38 to get close enough to hit the uh, Cromwell 6. Because what Galenia wants to do here is take out that Cromwell 6, maybe even the Staghound as well. But the Cromwell 6 now has line of sight onto the 258. You also see the Staghound engaging that as well. But Newton needs to be more concerned with this Pack 38. Let's see if he can actually see it coming. He can indeed, thanks to the Zwiadowski here. Oh, the Cromwell 5 is getting hit very hard by the Pack 38. This Pack 38 has been absolutely hero so far in this game. Gal O'Neill doing a fantastic job killing off multiple important units on this bottom side. With the crew knocked out there, Cromwell 5 is going to bounce a few more shots. I'm surprised it's not dead. It's only a little bit away from getting out of the 1000 meter range. We'll make it. We'll make it away. That is very important indeed. Cromwell 6 going to be able to fire at the Pack 38 here. Has been spotted in that tree line by the Zwiadowski quite easily. But on this bottom side, the 250 one there. Looks like it's going for the surrender onto the Cromwell 5, but fortunately the Staghound's still alive. So we'll likely see the Staghound uh, kill off that 251 or make it surrender before it gets anywhere near that Cromwell 5. Hurricane still flying about. Going to be trying to pin and kill off the Pack 38 here. 258 forced to fall back. Does manage to do some uh, morale damage to the Staghound, however. And this has been pretty close so far. Crazy game. It's nice to see that the pressure has sort of remained 50-50 across the board. But uh, Eugen's had the advantage on the top side and Galanil found an advantage on the bottom side after killing the Staghound. Very important indeed. If this Staghound can get a kill onto the 259, that would be really, really nice for Eugen. As it might allow him to continue into this town. However, this command infantry getting well ahead of itself. Looks like he's going for the Piat shot, I believe, onto the 259, but may just end up getting his command infantry killed, which is not good, really, if he wants to stop these rifles from being surrendered in the future. On the bottom side, the half track still going strong against the rifles. So Gell O'Neill microing this top side very, very well. He's currently mortaring the Cromwell 6 to make that fall back and he's keeping his pack 38 out of trouble here which is really important if he wants to try and kill off the staghound in the future. Cromwell 6 has moved behind the tree line there that's going to allow the pack 38 a little bit of time to get into the tree line and aim at the staghound. Two star pack 38 should be able to get the job done. Misses two shots already though. Surely the third one hits. Yes it does. Transmission damage. Can the fourth one get the kill? No, it can't as he misses again. This pack 38 must be very frustrating for Gal O'Neill. Eventually finds the kill. Cromwell 6 is going to be opening up onto the pack 38 soon after. However, that pack 38 will most likely just be ordered to fall back. Looks like that's going to be a fire position command there for Eugen so that he keeps the fire coming down. The pack 38 here did find a kill onto the Staghound on the top side of the town here. And the half track goes down. Things are not looking good for Eugen across the board, really. Especially with the Staghound dying on the top side as well. Gal O'Neill has a ton of units on the field. Um, loads of half tracks. Loads of Panzergrands. And the Panzergrands are just ripping to shreds of rifles everywhere. And Eugen's having to rely on his vehicles. But with his vehicles being damaged so much, it's just not going well. 251 going to just be fast moving towards this Cromwell as it gets forced to fall back by the mortar. Is that going to be a surrender? That would be absolutely devastating for Eugen. So the 251 going to be fast moving. Looks like a fast move command there towards the Cromwell as well. Now as long as this uh, Cromwell is in enemy territory it will remain falling back. So yeah, Gal O'Neill here just going to be trying to find that surrender. Get rid of that Cromwell. Eugen's brought in a Bedford to resupply this one that got the internal fragments early on. He's going to be reliant on this uh, Bofors here to try and... Oh, <laughs> this Bofors uh, to try and like pin this 251. This isn't causing a surrender, by the way, because the morale bar at the top is not filled. 
So this 251 could sit behind, sit by this Cromwell 6 all day, but that Cromwell 6 will continue to fall back until it finds friendly territory. So it's just a bit stuck there. That's going to be very frustrating for Eugen. Um, pack 38, going to be finding the kill on to the Cromwell 5, and Eugen surrenders. Now, I think that was a, a worthy surrender. We've seen a lot of surrenders in this tournament so far, but I think that one, honestly, all hope was lost because moving into phase B and C, the 12th SS just gets stronger and stronger versus the 1st Panzerna, and the 1st Panzerna really relies on a strong phase A and B in order to win a game. And this time around, it didn't fall in Eugen's favour. Gallo Neal, well played indeed. Some very nicely placed pack 38s did the job, along with the fire support from the 258, from the uh, half track, the 257 there. 355 kills to 630 losses for Eugen, and vice versa, of course. So kills for Eugen came in the form of this Cromwell 6, doing quite a lot of work on the top side, but not really paying itself off. Staghound did manage to find the kill onto the 258 and the 251 there. But uh, you can see just the, the lack of value for money that uh, Eugen was getting out of his vehicles. Whereas on the other side, we see these pack 38s really paying themselves off, getting the kill onto the Stuart 5 and the Staghound there on the bottom side of the town. We see Staghound kills onto these pack 38s, and every time a Staghound dies to a pack 38, that's pretty much the pack 38 paid itself off. Cromwell 5 also goes down to this one. And uh, we likely would have seen the uh, Cromwell 6 die on that top side eventually as well. So yeah, Eugen put in a pretty bad spot. But uh, that's going to be game one complete of the best of three in the semi-final. 1-0 to Eugen, or to Gallo Neal, sorry. Uh, Eugen's going to have to find two wins in a row in order to bring this back. Will he be the first to do so? We'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.